All right, so how's it going, everybody? Uh, I was uh, getting the meal in, uh, so I'm not sure what uh, Matt did on the introduction. Uh, so if I repeat anything, you'll have to forgive me. Um, I just want to take a moment to just give a uh, kind of a shout out to John and the members of the board for uh, SJ Entrepreneurs and what they're doing here to give, uh, to bring this together, to bring a place where entrepreneurs and business owners and influencers can come together and network uh, to ultimately learn like we're doing here today uh, and to be able to give back to the community. I think it's just an awesome thing that they've done and I just want to take a moment to just uh, to celebrate them for that. So, um, cool. uh, so as Matt said, my name is Bill Mervin. I'm a branch manager at Annie Mac Home Mortgage. Uh, we have a team there called the Mervin Mortgage Team, of course. Uh, we are certified mortgage planners. There are nine of us and uh, we have offices in uh, Newtown, Pennsylvania, Bucks County, uh, and here locally in New Jersey. Uh, we have been blessed on average for the last few years to be able to serve on average a little over 200 families per year, uh, helping them to make more educated and confident home buying and home financing decisions. Another thing I guess to know about me guys is I've always been really big on coaching, professional development, uh, personal development, and uh, I actually first came in contact with this material through a friend and, and mentor, Tim Brahim through his coaching program, uh, Leadership 360 uh, and Performance Experts. Uh, a little bit about Tim. Tim, his last year in the business, closed just under 700 units, uh, helped 700 families, uh, and did that while running and ultimately a few years later selling a company loan toolbox and, and having quite a bit of freedom and vacations and things that uh, I think certainly I was envious of when I learned about it. So just to give you a little context, this is ultimately his material. Um, he's been gracious enough. It's been super impactful in my life, uh, and I want to share it with you guys. Um, but that's the person who ultimately created this material, so I wanted to give you some context. So for those of you who are not in the business, if a loan originator does 100 units a year, I would consider them very successful. So he did, again, six times that while running another business and hopefully having some balance in his life. So um, I want to get an important housekeeping item out of the way uh, here, if we could. Um, could everybody who is not... A Dallas Cowboys fan, raise their hand, please. Get them up high. Get them up. All right, and everybody else, I'm going to have to ask to leave. <laughs> so, uh, I'm kidding, sort of. So, uh, anyway, just want to make sure everybody was awake, uh, and we can get in the material here. What is the Genius Zone? Right, the Genius Zone at its heart is ultimately about time management. <clears throat> I often see an evolution with entrepreneurs and salespeople and business people as it relates to productivity and time management. Uh, Usually it starts with a phase one, right, which is hustle and grind, right? A new person in sales or in business and uh, you see them kind of come out and we're just going to outwork everybody, right? I know, I know I've been there. <clears throat> you know, we're trading time, uh, time for money, right? I think the problem with this, guys, is that it's ultimately, it's a setup, right? Because it's what I call role entrapment. Once we become that guy, we become that girl, who is always accessible, who's always outworking, who's always hustling, it's very difficult to unwind that once we've started it. Um, so I would just kind of caution against that. We always want to, I see some of these people in my industry who post on a team page, you know, on a realtor page saying, hey, I'm, you know, midnight on Saturdays, I'm taking calls. Well, you know, again, once you've created that persona, it's very difficult to unwind and there's always going to be somebody coming in looking to outwork and outhustle you. So, Kind of the phase two that I've uh, often seen that uh, if you get here, you've you know, done some coaching or you've read some books, um, you start looking at ROI as it relates to time management. This is, you know, is what I'm doing, is it my highest and best use? You know, many of us uh, ultimately build teams or companies or join teams to ultimately leverage our ROI. Uh, but what I'm going to introduce to you guys today is a phase three, or what I like to call kind of the third dimension of time management, right? And this is, uh, this is ROE, return on energy, okay? And so ultimately, we wanna be asking ourselves, what is the energetic impact that engaging in this activity is having for me, right? So I wanna paint a picture for you guys, if I could for a moment. Um, and I want you to imagine that you wake up each morning with a metaphorical stack of 100 energy chips. And as we go throughout our day, right, we engage in activities that are going to either burn energy chips and leave us depleted, 
and uh, or we're going to ultimately gain energy chips from them, right? It's going to give us uh, joy and happiness, and we're going to gain energy as we go through the day. So our goal and objective is that by the end of the day that we're going to have some energy chips left over. All right? So what happens when we burn up all our energy chips as the day goes on? You know, we often have to prop ourselves up with artificial energy from caffeine or sugar. We come home, some of us crash, some might wind up drinking wine or unwinding in front of the TV. Or maybe we're home, I'll speak personally for myself, how often I've, you know, I've had my family tell me, you're here, but you're not present, right? So if that's something you struggle with, that's oftentimes has to do with having low energy when we go through our day. And, and often a result of the types of things that we opt into and we allow ourselves to get sucked into as the day goes on, right? So let's look at the, the flip side of that. What's our experience like when we end our workday with energy chips left? We have the energy to play and interact with our kids. Focus and attention to give to our spouse or significant other. Right? We have energy for hobbies like reading, journaling, the ability to give back perhaps at a church or in a community, scouting, whatever that is, whatever that looks like. But we end our day with energy to give to those things instead of being drained. Right? So now that you kind of have a better understanding of this kind of uh, third dimension of uh, time management, return on energy, let's take a look at uh, the genius grid. The genius grid is ultimately a, uh, broken into four quadrants. Okay, the most important quadrant that I want you guys, to, uh, the most important thing on there that I want you guys to pay attention, it's an important line of demarcation, is that middle line right there, all right, that runs across the middle. Um, that is the line that separates, everything below that line is low return on energy, okay? So, in fact, when we talk about activities that are there, we talk about doing activities that are below the line, right? So, and again, and through our coaching program and the people that you know, I work with, we talk about, is this activity we're doing below the line, right? So, is this one of those things that's just sucking the life out of you and sucking the energy out of you? And then, of course, activities that are either uh, energy neutral, right? Not everything's going to gain or lose. Sometimes it's just kind of the status quo or uh, energy positive. Those are above the line, all right? So in the bottom right-hand corner is the zone of incompetence, all right? These are activities that do not pay well, and they ultimately drain you of energy, and also, as the name kind of suggests, you're not very good at them, right? So time goes by slowly. One hour may seem like three. You dislike doing it. Your output is terrible. Your energy chips are spent rapidly. Your energy is low upon completion. You might say to yourself, man, I'm, I'm glad that's over with, right? So it is not worth your time financially to do this activity. And doing work in the zone absolutely detracts from the experience that you want to be having. So for me, this might be data entry or database management type stuff, right? It's not a very high payout activity for me. Um, and I just don't like it, right? I don't know many that do, but I'm sure somebody out there enjoys that stuff, right? And you, does, this doesn't all have to be in business. It could be in your personal life, right? So I, I kind of mentioned in one of the promos that much of this is focused around business, but it doesn't have to be. So for me, it could be, I, I just found out that Amazon can come out and hang a TV for you, which is pretty weird, but, but good at the same time, I suppose. I hate hanging TVs. It's not a high payout activity for me, right? I can get somebody to do it for much less than ultimately I'd like to be earning. And it drains me of energy, and it's probably going to fall off the wall. It, it, there's a decent chance of that. I'm not very good at it. So again, you can think of things in each one of these boxes that aren't specific to business and, and, and are also in your personal life, right? <laughs> so the next box up there, the bottom left, is the zone of competency, right? These things could be low, neutral, or high ROI, um, but the one thing that they all are is low ROE. So these are also energy depleting, again, below the line, right? So when you do these things, time goes by slowly. It is an effort to get the task done. You're rewarded for the effort emotionally as the results are good, because again, you're competent at it. Energy chips are spent from the effort of getting it done. It may be worth your time financially, and doing work in this zone does not give you the experience that you want to be having. Now this is where many of us spend the majority of our time 
and it's ultimately the most seductive zone that we get sucked into in this. So, you know, why might that be? Well, again, we're good at it, right? So we get results, and when we get results, we get emotionally rewarded, right? People tell us we're good at these things. You know, ultimately, but ultimately it's three major things. Oftentimes it's fear uh, that keeps us doing things in this zone, right? So three, three things of fear that I've kind of identified is sometimes we're scared people aren't going to like us. Right? And it doesn't mean they're going to like us like they want to be friends, but in my business, I'm going to relate much of this to my business, if I don't pick up that realtor's phone call immediately and get back to them immediately, they're not going to like me and they're going to call somebody else, right? So that's fear-based often, right? I mean, there, there's obviously we have to be responsive, but a lot of that often is, is fear-based. So I hop right in and do something ultimately that somebody else might be better suited to do because I'm driven by fear. Another thing is, is that we want it to get done well and we fear that if we don't do it, somebody else won't not do it as well. Oftentimes this isn't true because if we set up our team and our processes properly, um, they should be ultimately doing them better than us. But again, this gets us sucked into things that uh, ultimately are, uh, may or may not be paying the bills, but certainly are things that drag us down on energy, um, at which makes it more likely that we end our day with nothing left in the tank. Um, and then another one that I think is particularly relevant for anybody here who has grown, grown a team or is trying to grow a team or may grow one in the future, which is we don't want to be considered unimportant, right? Uh, I, another person, a mentor that I've spent some time with, Carl White, who's another big uh, person in our industry, he has a thing called the Acts of Freedom where you literally lay out from the beginning from you know, perhaps meeting with a, a realtor or referral sources all the way through closed loans and outlining who on the team ultimately is supposed to be doing those things. And he says if you as the team leader have more than about four things that are in your column, you're doing something wrong, right? But I struggle with that personally. So I feel like, well, if I don't do these things, am I relevant anymore? Well, of course we are, because we're the one that pulls it all together and kind of orchestrates it all. But that's a, that's a real fear that ultimately sucks us into these below the line activities because we're, we're scared that we'll lose relevance and we'll no longer be important or needed, all right? So uh, we do these things pretty well. Um, and uh, I'll give you an example for me. It would be stepping in to fix a problem file in the mortgage business, right? I have great people on my team. They've been with me a long time. They can fix it. I can tell you, though, it's very alluring to be able to come in and save the day and ride, ride in on a white horse, right? But the fact of the matter is, is that, and then you get the pat on the back. Oh, you're amazing. You guys got this done. Nobody else would get it done. But again, there's other things. It's draining. And there's other things that we could be doing that are a better use of our time. So ultimately, that's a good example for me of something that I'm competent at. I get good results, but it's draining. And ultimately, I'm not allowing other people uh, who are in a position to, to do it because I just get sucked into it because of the short-term emotional reward of, of problem solving. Right? So if we go up into the top left-hand column, this is the zone of uh, excellence. Right? These things are uh, high ROI, so you get paid very well to do them and they are neutral ROE, right? So you're not depleting energy as you do them, uh, but you're also not gaining it, okay? Uh, time goes by at a normal pace. One hour seems like one hour. You are excellent at it and the results show. You don't gain or burn energy when engaging in it, energy neutral, as I said. And you uh, are paid, again, paid well for the activity. And if you spent most of your time in this zone, life would be joyful and profitable. Right, so this is really ultimately where you're gonna want to try to spend most of your time. It would be nice for us to spend all of our time in a genius zone, which we'll get to in a minute, but it's just not practical. But if we could spend most of our time here, we would be not going home, we would not be going home depleted uh, with no energy left, and we would be making quite a bit of money and leading a very good life, all right? Uh, you're working with purpose, and again, you would not go home drained. Uh, and then in the top right-hand column, uh, what this um, presentation was named after, the, the genius zone, okay? This is high ROI and high ROE. So time goes by fast, three hours may seem like one hour, or another way you could say it, I've heard it says time stands still, right? So it's just, you're just in the zone and you're just living your purpose, all right? You get paid, compensated very well for doing this. You're gifted when engaging in it and very few are as good at it as you are. You gain energy chips and feel more alive after doing it than you did when you started. That's kind of a hallmark 
of being in your genius zone. And you are in joy when doing it. So I kind of wanted to save and ask you guys, what would it be like if most of your vocation made you feel this way? Um, what are some times when time just stood still when you were you know, working and, and doing what you do? Right? And these are the types of things we want to become more aware of and ultimately try to set up our life, our businesses, our processes in a way that uh, gets us into this zone more, more and more. All right, so now that we have a little bit of a better idea of, um, excuse me, now we have a little bit better idea of what the genius zone is, uh, let's talk about kind of what the process is and where do we go. So the first thing we want to do is we want to decide what our, our desired rate of pay is. All right, if you have not done this, this is something that I strongly uh, urge each of you to do. Uh, certainly to take our desired annual earnings, divided by the amount of weeks that you would like to work, and then divided by the hours per week that you'd like to work. That would give you your desired rate of pay. From this, um, so just a quick sidebar, even before I got into the uh, you know, ROE and Genius Zone, it's a good acti activity from an ROI standpoint to determine these things that I'm doing, would I pay somebody X amount of dollars, whatever your desired rate of pay is, to do this thing? If the answer is no, then you should not be doing it as much as possible. You should find out how not to do it as quickly as possible by either eliminating, delegating, uh, or automating that process. All right? All right, so uh, to kind of pick up where we left off, guys, uh, you know, we did the desired annual rate of pay. That's going to be important not only in what we're doing here for the Genius Zone, uh, the Genius Grid, but also, again, it's just something I think it's a really good idea to start filtering th things through what you want to be making and as you opt in and out of things, uh, deciding whether or not they meet uh, that hourly rate of pay, right? So, excuse me, uh, the next thing we're going to do, the way that we get this all started is we do time logging. This could be tedious to some of you. This was definitely a low energy activity for me. Right? In fact, I had to try it a couple times. I'll, I'll be totally transparent with you guys. Um, this is a form that we can email to anybody who wants it. I would imagine most of you would. Um, it's an Excel spreadsheet. And the idea is <clears throat> for a minimum of one, preferably two weeks, you want to log at minimum from the time you start doing anything related to work to the time that you end. You could even take it from the time you wake up to the time you go to bed, because again, some of this stuff is related to not just work, but also to the things that we choose into personally, right? So one to two weeks of data where we get things at minimum from the time we start working till the time we end working. And what we want to do is we want to put the red activities. Okay, so then we're going to go through, and then we are going to look at everything that's on that list. And then, uh, and again, this has something where you can put in, you can mark either R or G for red or green. And everything that you did over the course of those one or two weeks that would not earn you or you would not pay somebody the desired hourly rate of pay, you're going to mark that as red, all right? And anything that would earn you or that you would pay somebody your desired rate of pay uh, that you did, you would mark as green. All right? And the first thing that you're going to do is you're going to put all the red activities as either competence or incompetence, right? So those competence, incompetence, of course, in fact, you can go back for a moment to the, the grid, please. So everything that's a red activity, you would go and you would put into either the zone of, uh, one more, the zone of competent, uh, incompetence or competence, because if they're red, they are low ROI, they're not earning you money, and they can only go in one of two places. You're either good at it or you're bad at it, right? Um, so you would put all of those red things in one of those two places, depending on whether you're good or bad and whether or not they, um, you know, how they resonate with you, all right? Then the next thing that you would do is you would take the green items, and the green items can go one of three places. Green items, which are, of course, they pay you well to do them, are either gonna go into the competence uh, excellence or the genius zone, right? So basically, if it is something that really resonates with you, something that gives you joy when you're doing it, you're going to put it in genius. If it's neutral, right? It pays well, but you don't gain or lose energy trips, you're going to put it in the zone of excellence, all right? And if it is something that feels heavy, it's energy draining, then you're going to put it into that confidence box that we discussed, right? There's going to be some that are going to be harder than others to categorize. Here are some of them. Right? High ROI, 
and a low ROE, right? These things pay well, but they do not fill you up energetically. They take a lot of effort to get done. These things must be, so they're gonna go in here, right? Because they're low ROE, but they pay you well. These things must be handed to someone else or they, you must shift your execution in a way that will be energy, energy positive for you. So I'll give you an example with my team and how we've implemented this with uh, what we did with Matt and uh, our business development. So Matt uh, and Joe, their job is to business development. So we've broken up the loan officer role into people that are out uh, making and supporting the relationships, the referral relationships, and then the internal team who's doing the loan side of the work, right? So uh, Matt was doing both, as was I and my team, and the fact is, is that I noticed energetically when he was out doing events like this, right, which I can do it, it's not necessarily my, my zone, right? When he's out doing zone, uh, things like this, he's in his zone. You can tell when you've, if you've met Matt, right? So you can tell. So, but then I would see we're dealing with a borrower issue or something like that, and he would just get very down on it. Right, well the same thing, where for me personally, I enjoy meeting with some realtors, right? So, not all of them, right? Some of them suck the life out of me, I'll be quite honest with you guys, right? So ultimately, um, when I would, and the ones that would suck the life out of me would make it less likely for me to m want to meet with the ones that were in line with us. Right, so this is a high ROI activity if you're in my business, is meeting with realtors or other referral partners who are in a position to refer you business. But for me, it was sometimes low ROI, ROE. It drained my energy. So what we did is we put Matt in the business development position and then later Joe so that he could do the bulk of the meetings. He could be out glad handing, meeting with people, supporting, beating the weeds, if you will, and then I could step into the ones where we, we already knew that these people were aligned with and they weren't gonna suck the energy out of me. So that was our team's solution to find what Matt's genius zone was, what my genius zone was, and find a way to do more of these high payout activities with a way that isn't gonna suck and, and uh, suck the life and energy out of us, all right? So low ROI and high ROE activities. These are activities that ultimately are not all that profitable uh, or may not be as profitable as they could be, um, but they are energy giving, right? Um, so you, you have to either find a way to make them more profitable or be willing to acknowledge that you're giving up potential income in order to do something that fills you up energetically. I'll give you an example, a person in my coaching program, he's a $60 million producer in Denver, um, and he just, many people that when you get to that level, they're not doing a lot of the loan level applications any longer, right? Um, he enjoys it. He's got a very plush couch in his office and uh, he has people come in and he sits and he does consults with them and he likes it. And he ultimately decided that that to him, he was comfortable where he was at and where his business was at and he didn't want to get up off of that even though he could go out and get up off of that activity, even though he could go out and get more relationships and get somebody to have those loan applications because he enjoyed it enough. But he was able to, to do it from a position of you know, really being able to think it through and say, yes, this is worth it to me to trade off this potential earning potential uh, for the ability to do something that I really enjoy, right? So it doesn't mean that we're always offloading it, but we want to at least be calculated about whether we're doing it and recognize that we're, we're going to be potentially making concessions if we're doing things that don't pay us our desired, uh, you know, rate of pay. All right, a couple more is neutral ROI and low ROE and uh, neutral ROI and high ROE. So um, just so I realize we're a little behind, I'll try to summarize these. These are things that ultimately, the return on investment is debatable, and they are either something that you do, does resonate with you energetically or does not. Uh, again, I'll relate it to my business, which is uh, attending closings, okay? Uh, dirty secret about our business, I'm gonna tell you, is that most lenders do not attend because they want, they're cared about the client experience. I'll be very frank with you. I believe, personally, that you can create just as good or a better client experience without having to be there, right? So if we have done everything that we said we were going to do, and if we've communicated clearly throughout the entire process, and if what the client gets was as good or better than what they were promised, and we've gone over everything with them in advance of the closing, there's no reason for me to sit there and sign documents with you, right? A lot of lenders go there because it's an opportunity to get in front of the listing agent or to glad hand with some of the other people in the office and it's a business development opportunity, right? So I think, and I struggle with this because I was of the mindset you had to go, but, it's, but again, this was through my coaching program, 
that it's debatable the return on investment. If you've done a great job at all those things, I think you've earned the uh, opportunity to, the right to ask for a meeting with those individuals. Right, so again, this is, a, this is a neutral ROI. It's debatable on whether or not this is a good payout activity or not, because you've got to drive to the closing. Sometimes it's a half an hour. Sometimes it's an hour and 15 minutes. Um, so it's very debatable whether or not it's a good payout activity. But if this is something that you enjoy doing, then the idea is, is to find ways to make it more profitable, right? So maybe we do some sort of way to promote it. So maybe we do something special for the agents to but the bottom line is, is that we're finding ways, if we do enjoying it, and it's a questionable uh, return on investment, how do we find ways to maximize it and make it more profitable? And if it's a questionable return on investment and we don't enjoy doing it, we need to find ways to offload it, which we've done by creating our system. We explain it up front how it works in terms of not going to closing and, and it's worked for us. And we just decided it wasn't a good use of time and we didn't enjoy doing it, so uh, we offloaded that, right? So I think the point of all this is to say that those are the areas where the magic happens, right? Because when we're working with intention and deliberation to shed activities that are seductive but not ideal, those are the things that are in our uh, zone of competence, or we're working to make things either more profitable uh, or better energetically, like I did with, with Matt, which I explained to you, the fact is, is that once we have a roadmap, once we're actually able to understand that there's this other, this third dimension of uh, how we invest our energy, we're able to have more, uh, be more deliberate about the things that we choose into and we're able to kind of move the needle. Because some of us are gonna do some things that are above the line and below the line no matter what. But until we actually understand it and we're able to kind of take a look at it, we're not able to make decisions to, to, again, to optimize and improve it. So that's really where, where the magic happens. Um, you know, so the last thing that you would do then is you would order the items on each one of those things as the top five. Everything that's in the below the line, you would take the top five things that you want to eliminate. Uh, as I mentioned, that you would either delegate, automate, or eliminate. And things that are above the line, these are things that you would, you would mention them, you would label them the top five of the things that you ultimately want to, to start doing more of right away. Um, so why is this all important? You know, life is, is ultimately about more than work. Uh, if you were to ask me uh, to prioritize, you know, to list you my priorities, I'd probably say something like, you know, God, family, work, right? I think very few people would ultimately tell you that the work is their number one priority. Uh, but I, I would say that most of us, uh, I'll speak for myself, certainly me, but I was always bothered by the incongruence with the fact that the majority of my time and energy were ultimately going to work, even though that was down on my priority list, right? Um, so, you know, we're not, when we're not as effective as we need to be when we're working, we're getting a lower ROI, then we have to ultimately work more hours. Uh, when we do things that drain our energy, then our families, our teams, our communities are getting us when the tank is empty, it's a low ROE. And when we can make, but when we can make the most money possible in the least amount of time, which is a high ROI, and go home at the end of the day with energy chips to spare, we're ultimately able to live out the experience that we want to be having, right? Think of this as your why you're doing all this, why it's all important. So, uh, and, and another way that I would say it is, is that, so that's one of my five children, right? Xavier, and that was from this morning. And when you think about this, when you think about these things in this new, this third dimension of where your energy is, I gotta think that every time I opt into something that's below the line, I'm kinda gonna have less energy chips when I get home to spend on him, right? And when we start thinking about it in that context, uh, it brings a sense of urgency to, to all this, I think. So I'd like you guys just to quickly to close your eyes if you would. Um, I'm gonna just kinda be real authentic with you guys. So wh where does this all go? You, the idea now is to create an experience statement. You've been hearing me say, talk about having the experience that you wanna have. So any of you guys that would that, and if you want to eat, that's fine too. This is my experience statement. <clears throat> I'm living life intentionally where I wake up and live my life in line with my priorities and values. My work is a means to an end, allowing me to enjoy my life myself and with my family and friends. It's not the source of my joy or an area that I'm giving the majority of my energy. I leave plenty of time and just as important energy to be present with myself and loved ones. This allows me to experience more joy and happiness and to bring more joy and happiness to others. I enjoy life's simple pleasures, such as making new friends, having deep and meaningful conversations with those around me, 
I enjoy the beauty and nature of my home and remember to let gratitude fill my heart for all that I have and all that life offers. I take time for myself early in the a.m. or late at night to be alone with myself and to stay grounded. I play jokes and games that allow me to laugh often and tap into my inner child with a few examples being off-roading, playing sports, swimming, and allowing myself to be silly without judgment. I make, which I do well, <laughs> uh, I make time to invest in my children and to teach them new things and bring happiness into their lives. I spend one-on-one -on -one time with my wife and enjoy an intimate friendship with her. I try new things and I'm open to new experiences. I leave plenty of time to teach and help others so that they grow and achieve their goals and lead more fulfilled lives as well. I save, serve others with an open heart and no expectation of anything in return. I try not to have attachment to things and use my gifts and blessings to help and serve others. So that was my experience statement that I wrote after going through this exercise uh, on retreat in Costa Rica. Um, but, you know, life ultimately is about more than work, right? So, in, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> so, uh, you know, you write out your experience statement and, uh, and then you journal about it and what you really want out of life, not things, not goals, not accomplishments, but what exactly you want to be doing and experiencing as you go through life. When you write it down, you read it out loud to yourself regularly, and then you go through this exercise, and as you go through your weekly routines, you want to start asking yourself, before you opt into activities or take on commitments, is this bringing me farther from or closer to the experience that I want to be having? Right? So anybody who wants it, we're going to get you guys out uh, the, a copy of the time logger. Right, and anybody who wants to complete it, if you do it thoroughly and you complete at least a week, preferably two, you can email it to Joe Tercy. Um, and what I'm going to do is, depending on the amount of interest we have, I will either set it up in a Zoom or a call format or potentially one-on-ones uh, with people that are, are, if you guys are willing to do the work, this has been impactful enough in my life that, again, it may be, it may be as a group, collectively, a, a Genius Zone 201. Uh, or it could be something that I do one-on-one -on -one depending on the interest. So we will get you, you have the pages, we can get you more of the actual pages uh, that, you can, that you can use as a guide in the process that I've laid out here. We'll get you the time logger and then like I said you can email it to Joe Tercy if you have interest and I'd be happy to help you guys. So with that, um, that really is the presentation. I hope that this is impactful for you guys and that you guys get something out of it. It's, it's been, again, really meaningful in my life, and uh, if you guys have any questions, I'd, I'd love to answer them if we have time.